Hi there, today on Typical Books, we're gonna be talking about my top books for 2023. I read 30, 31 books, and I have 30 that I can rank, and it is painful because I did read quite a few books by authors I know and authors that I got to meet. So it's, it's painful taking some books away from this list. Goodbye 2023, hello 2024, and my reading list is off to a really good start this year, but I'll save that for a future video. Right now we're talking about the things that I had read in 2023. Now, no doubt you have seen other people's ranked videos. I'm a little bit behind in getting to this, but it takes a little bit to get this glorious tableau ready for consumption. Yes, 30 some books. Uh, I'll probably pop in and out through this video uh, as I normally do. If you've watched my ranked videos before, I think this is the third or fourth year that I've been doing this and I, <laughs> I really do like doing them. It's a little bit lazy in that I get to open up Photoshop and play around, move, move pictures of books around. A uh, huge thanks to Goodread because I took all of these from that website and I track everything. Now, notoriously, I don't give star ratings to every single book. So if you see something that you're interested in hearing me talk more about here, let me know if I don't already have a review on the show about it. I know there's quite a few here I did talk about in depth on the show already. So I'm not going to review everything in depth as we go, but I have a copy of the video playing. I'll talk through it as we discuss every single book I read in 2023. Now, as we can see here, the 30 books arranged thus. I have a couple other books, I think, that I'd forgotten to add to this list, odd as it is, but yeah, we'll go through them one by one. They are all arranged randomly, and I do go through rearranging them quite often throughout this video. So yeah, I, I just think it's fun to think about my reading in this manner and try and figure out what the top 10 were because if you were to ask me on the street i would be dumbfounded and i may choose something that doesn't fit you'll notice that the uh, richard layman book the woods are dark the background i find matches this glorious background that i have chosen it's tough to not keep it in the running just because of that there are two non-fiction books create something awesome by roberto blake and Naomi Klein's Doppelganger, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. But I'm taking them out of the running, not because they weren't enjoyable, because they are massive outliers. Next year, there will probably be more nonfiction books in the running, but since there's only two, I will just say I enjoyed the heck out of both of them. Now in no order, I will go through each book one by one as they appear randomly on this page. First up, of course, The Woods Are Dark by Richard Lehman. Poking Holes by Juan Valencia, and it's a short story collection. There's a couple of those on this list as well, more outliers. Where the Ocean Was, a collection by Nathaniel A. Giles, and The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. Closer by Dennis Cooper. You could talk to Juan for more Dennis Cooper, really, but yeah, uh, enjoyable read. Very enjoyable read. Bad Blood by Tobin Elliott. I've been sleeping on the rest of this series and I really need to get to it sooner than later. Playground by Aaron Beauregard. Very popular book. I've been seeing a lot of fan art from that lately online. Womb by Duncan Ralston. An amazing reach. This book has had a lot more reach than you would suspect. Brian Keene's Darkness on the Edge of Town. I love this. I, I loved this book and I it is a new read for me. I should have read it ages ago. Allure by Tim McGregor. Love this. Dead of Winter, Darcy Coates. It's the dead of winter right now, so quite fitting. Nothing But Blackened Teeth. I have an in-depth review about that and it's mixed reviews. Shadow Dancers of Brixton Hill by Nicole Wilson. Absolutely enjoyable, highly recommended novella. Wasps in the Ice Cream, another really highly recommended novella by Tim McGregor. There's another Tim McGregor on this list too. And uh, Richard Lehman's Island, I have a video about that particular book as well. Same with Wasps in the Ice Cream. The Sp Spite House by Johnny Compton, really fun. I have really enjoyed this. Most of these are just really good picks this year. The Bat by Yo Nesbo. You may recall I talked a little bit about that. I didn't review it in depth, but I did enjoy it quite a lot. Grey Noise 
by Marcus Hawk. I have other Marcus Hawk to get to as well. Really enjoyed Grey Noise, a novella. And The Devil's Promise by Celso Hurtado. Highly recommended YA, but like edging into adult horror fiction. Demonic horror fiction too. The Grimmer by Nabin Ratnam, and I am probably mispronouncing his name yet again. Really good book. Uh, Yo Nesbo's Night House. The Night House was great. I loved that. It's weird that there's two Yo Nesbo's in this list, and I just realized that. Side by side at that. Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. We reviewed that on the show and watched the film that just came out. So huge, highly enjoyable. Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright, also known as Billy Martin. Hugely enjoyable. This was a reread. Quite a few of these were rereads, actually, especially the Richard Lehman stuff, of course. Samantha Klosnick's Lonesome Haunts. I uh, enjoyed that. It's a collection of three short stories. Alex E. Harrow's Starling House, a new book, and uh, The Hobbit by Tolkien, that very old book. And I read that right at the end of the year. That was like one of the last books that I read. So there's two gaps here for the non fiction books that I'd read. Create Something Awesome by Roberto Blake. If you don't watch a lot of gurus and you have a YouTube channel, you know, I caution people against watching those sites of videos, but Roberto Blake's really pretty good. There's a Brian Johnston guy as well that talks about YouTube. He's a YouTube guru. But if you're not into watching those videos, read Roberto's book. I know Sin from Sin's Book Nook has read it because she talked about this book and I saw her in the chat of Roberto Blake a live stream once. So yeah, helpful, interesting, good book. If you like that DIY stuff, sort of self-helpy kind of stuff, then create something awesome is fun. And a different kind of fun, we have Naomi Klein's Doppelganger, and I enjoyed that immensely as well this year. Now you'll know it's not, you know, that lighthearted. It's kind of a dark, horrible thing, especially if, like me, like people in Ottawa, you lived through the brunt of the convoy and uh, a lot of like COVID lockdown hysteria in larger cities. Uh, for long form journalism though, I like it and I'm gonna get to no logo sooner than later. So we'll take the nonfiction out of the running entirely for the purposes of this scramble. So we shall begin removing books properly. And like The Hobbit, I wanna just take out, but I did enjoy it. It's a, it's a fantastic read. So. Even though it was a reread, lots of these were reread. I'm gonna leave it in for now and we'll begin the cull. The first cut is the deepest. We're going to uh, eliminate Samantha Klosnick's Lonesome Haunts. It just wasn't for me. It is a sapphic collection. And although I do enjoy all of her other work that I've read so far and want to read more, uh, it's just not for me. So yeah, that one goes. Forgive a few of these is flashing. I'm just trying to see where they are, right? Like Night in the Lonesome October. That was a reread, but it's staying. Next to go will be the Grimmer. Uh, it is a YA story and it's just not entirely for me. I did enjoy the fact that it was a twist on the drug use problem in fiction in that it was the father with the drug problem and not the son, but it was just a little too YA for my taste. Next to go will be The Bat by Yo Nesbo. Um, and I'm not just being cruel because it's true crime. It's just not for me entirely. Uh, not super memorable. So I, I liked it. I liked it quite a lot. I'm looking forward to reading the French version sometime this year if I'm lucky. But yeah, now the, the bat is over here. Up next will be The Paul Bearers Club. I, I liked it. Again, it doesn't really stick with me. I don't think about it often. I mostly forgot <laughs> that I, I read it, but I would love to see a film of this very much, very, very much. So yeah, it's just not top 10 material. Uh, and I try and think of these eliminations as, would this be in my top three? And then think down from there, Paul Bear's Club wouldn't be in the top three and uh, not top 10 subsequently. Next to eliminate is Playground by Aaron Beauregard. I didn't not enjoy it. Like I had fun reading it. I don't really get the hype. I mean, it, it was an interesting read, but it had so many weird turns of phrase. And I hesitate to say not good writing because I'm not here to pick on it. But there were like 10 things that I highlighted while reading that that were just absurd. And not absurd because there's a lot in the book that is absurd, 
but uh, just not like writing that tripped me up and it was just very awkward but yeah it was fun it was just not uh, certainly not top 10 not top 3 next to go is The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson again just not a super <laughs> enticing read for me the first third of the book or the first like fifth of the book I really liked and I like the last few pages that tie into that but everything in the middle is just the kind of cosmic horror that does not work for me I'm pretty picky I can read any slasher in the world but cosmic horror there's a small handful that really works for me and this is not one of them next to go would be Richard Lehman's The Woods Are Dark I just not a huge fan <laughs> i like wrong turn and wrong turn the original film where they follow a lot of the family in the woods not the survivors or victims and i found that this was that sort of story that really follows the survivors and victims far too much not as strongest work really it's really not and there were some like chunks in it that made very little sense uh, i like the alternate ending because there was like a missing ending to this particular book but yeah it's just not top 10 material so next the spite house johnny compton i saw johnny compton talk i really like this not super memorable though and i'm looking forward to his next work for a debut it was really good though i will say um but yeah spite house just not for me because i mean if unless somebody asked me do you have any good books about spite houses i i don't know who i'd recommend it to Next to go in the great cull of 2023 is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. I liked it. It was fun. Not top 10 material. It's the cover that really speaks to me, but we're not judging covers here today. Uh, if it was a top cover competition, they would win. But no, it's not in the top 10. And what we'll say the uh, 11th cut is the deepest. <laughs> The Hobbit by Tolkien. It's great. It's a fantastic book, but I read it for utilitarian purpose and it was just a reread that I do so very often and I it would just be so weird to have it rank. So as much as I love The Hobbit, it's a great book. This isn't the great books of all time though. This is the greatest books that I read in 2023. Hobbit is out of the running. And back to another Layman Night in the Lonesome October. I liked it. It's great. It's just not that great of a book you know it's not his strongest book in my estimation i liked it it was a good reread but not in the top 10. dark harvest this is kind of a tough one you know i liked it uh, i would recommend it and i do look forward to rereading it but there's so many other great books here up against it it's out of the running this time and we'll eliminate two kind of quickly it's uh, it's tough for me it's getting tough especially when we're getting into canadian authors or authors that I've talked to, authors that I really appreciate. Uh, Marcus Hawk has sent me quite a few books. I'm looking forward to reading the rest. Grey Noise is excellent. It's made it this far, but I will eliminate it. And Devil's Promise by Celso Hurtado. Really great, really great book. Uh, not as, I didn't like it as much as uh, Ghost Tracks, I guess, because I think Ghost Tracks made my list last year, but here we are. I think I just read a lot more powerful books this year is all. And another painful one, Poking Holes, One Valencia, really great book. A really, really strong book. And I highly recommend his short stories to everyone, especially if you're looking for something oh, quite a bit darker. Uh, yeah, definitely check out Juan's book, not in the top 10. And hey, you know what? If I'm not going to include Juan Valencia in my top 10, Dennis Cooper can't be in it either. So really excellent novella, long novella, short novel. Really liked Closer. It's out of the running as is Island by Richard Lehman, because it's not the top 11, it's the top 10. So in no particular order, we have Alexi Hero, Starling House, Wasps in the Ice Cream by Tim McGregor, Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright, Duncan Ralston's Womb, Where the Ocean Was by Nathaniel A. Giles, Bad Blood by Tobin Elliott, Yo Nesbo's The Night House, Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates, Brian Keane, Darkness on the Edge of Town, and Lure by Tim McGregor. It's fantastic to me that I have two Tim McGregors on this list. So I'll just straighten these up, these books here, and I'm trying to arrange them a little bit better so we can get a sense of where they fit into the books that were eliminated. Now I've rearranged everything behind them, including the nonfiction books, just so we can have a real sense of where these 10 are chosen out of 30. 
It might seem like a pretty easy thing to do to choose 10 of your favorite things out of 30 things, but they're all really strong reads. I really curated a good reading list, I think, this year. So if you're interested in horror at all of any sort, here's something for you, I'm sure, out of these 30 books. Now, the really tough part is arranging this line of 10 books that are still random into what I really liked one through 10 and rank these. This is tough, but you know, I'm going to just start with some of these middle books where the ocean was and bad blood that sort of sits where I would suspect they would sit lure. I enjoyed a lot. You know, I enjoyed where the ocean was more starling house dead of winter. Like all these really fantastic, strong books. This is so tough, like picking your favorite children. The one book I know that goes at the end of this because it's not a top nine list because it's a top 10 Jonas Bo's The Night House made it in so it goes there. Dead of Winter I enjoyed so very much and this is really kind of about where it would sit I think. We'll see it may move. All this might move. The books that are left over are pretty sharp books though. We might move some stuff around here. I don't know. Womb I know I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so very much. Did I enjoy Wasps with the Ice Cream more? Yes, I did. Exquisite Corpse, that's, oh my. It's in the top three. That's one thing for sure. Same with Starling House. Now, there we go. Much better. Yeah. There is our ranked list. Top 10 books of 2023. Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. Fantastic stuff. Brian Keene's Darkness on the Edge of Town. I absolutely loved it. Shocking stuff. Alex E. Harrow's Starling House. Beautifully written. Sort of fantasy book, really. Wasps and the Ice Cream for fans of old Stephen King and wishing he'd get back to it. It's okay, you have Tim McGregor and this particular book. Duncan Ralston's Womb. If you're exploring some uh, extreme horror, definitely check that out. Where the Ocean Was by Nathaniel A. Giles. Short, dark, kind of odd horror stories that I think you would really enjoy if you like quieter stuff or if you're a Chuck Palahniuk fan that wants to get into horror and ghost stories that aren't really like ghostly ghost stories. Yeah, more modern, quiet horror. You'll enjoy it. Nathaniel A. Giles. Bad Blood by Tobin Elliott. If you're looking for some updated modern stuff and you really enjoyed reading something like Stephen King's Green Mile that was told in like novellas, then Bad Blood and that series is for you. There is a full length novel within the series, but as far as I recall, the rest are novellas. So yeah, definitely start with Bad Blood though. Lure by Tim McGregor, the second Tim McGregor and quite a few Canadian authors on this list as well. Uh, yeah, mermaid horror. Uh, I don't think I'm spoiling it from the cover. You can see there's a mermaid on there quite clearly. Uh, very dark, very cool seaside cosmic horror. Darcy Coates, Dead of Winter. Now, she may not be Canadian. She may be from Down Under. I, I got to meet her. She handed me the copy of this book, which I think is fantastic. But yeah, this particular book speaks to me as a Canadian because it takes place in the dead of winter as advertised. And of course, Yo Nesbo's The Night House, super fun. It is kind of twisty and I can see the twist throwing a lot of people off and some people may not have enjoyed it, but yeah, I enjoyed The Night House very, very much. So looking at these 10 top reads of 2023 and seeing how they fit into the larger scheme of these 30, are there better books out there? Yeah, probably. Did I read them this year? No, I didn't. So the 2023 list as we have it with a reread, Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright topping the list. I mean, who'd have guessed? I wouldn't have guessed. It's like one of those things, a reread, you often forget you've read them in the year. Not that I could ever forget reading Exquisite Corpse, but it was the most enjoyable reread. It had been so long and I had probably been stoned when I read it as a teen. So it was like a whole fresh thing. I don't think I really knew all the details of Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes when I read this. I certainly had no idea of the other murderer from across the pond that it is based on. So like I have a way better grounding of understanding. I probably had just as many gay friends back then. So I don't think that I have much more deeper understanding of the drive there. Maybe a lot more compassion as I've aged, but you know, that was always kind of there anyway. But 
you know, the, the murder, the serial murder, the cannibalism within this book really speaks to me even more so as an adult. Maybe it just strikes me as a shade darker. But yeah, beautifully written, wonderfully written book and always will be. Looking at these 10 books again, I'm struck by just what a cool list of books I got to read throughout the year. And I'm always struck by how many people read way, 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 way more than me and how they keep it straight and how they rank what their favorite books are. If a lot of them even bother to rank them, if they can even remember. So you can check me out on Goodreads where I'll be tracking as usual, the books that I read throughout the year. I don't typically rate or review on Goodreads, but I talk about the books here. If there are books that you think I ought to be reading in 2024, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything in this list that I didn't talk about enough for your liking, let me know. And I'll gladly offer a full review on the show of something that I maybe didn't talk enough about. But thank you so much for watching and reading along in 2023. Happy New Year and happiest of 2024. I hope your reading has started off on a great page and have an ooky spooky day.